In March of 2002, the Reagans celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. Because of the president's Alzheimer's, it was a bittersweet time. Still, Mrs. Reagan talked with Katie Couric about her five decades of memory. When you think about our lives, it's been extraordinary. The different paths that we've gone on that we never intended to go on. It's really wonderful. You'll be celebrating your 50th anniversary on I March know. 4th. Do you think, where did the time go? I, I know, can't believe I it. I know, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But isn't it wonderful? I mean, 50 years. In That's this, a long time. <laughs> and in this day and age, when you hear the statistics yeah. about 50% uh, of all marriages end in divorce, it really is quite an accomplishment, isn't it? I guess so. <laughs> but then, you know, I, I think I was born to be married. Really? <laughs> I think I was born married. I was the happiest girl in the world when I became we. I, you know, I, I loved that. I loved everything about marriage. You have said in the past that your life began when you met Ronald Reagan. It did. Everybody made fun of me, but... <laughs> <laughs> they did? Why did they make fun of you? I don't know. It sounds kind of square, I guess. Kind but... of sappy? Yeah. I think it sounds really sweet. For all those years of love and devotion, Mrs. Reagan is left with a lifetime of memories she can no longer share and now must treasure alone. You know, I, I think 50 years, and it's very hard to pick one moment or, or the other that stands out. But we've had a great life, a great life. And I was very blessed to find him. I really was. And he you, you think? And he, yes. <laughs> Not only anniversaries, but every holiday was a special time for the Reagans. They celebrated each one with cards and letters. Ronnie and I both would exchange a dozen cards, number one. And he, Ronnie is a very sentimental man, very romantic man. On my birthday, he would send flowers to my mother, thanking her for having me. Aw. Now, you know, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I'll say. That that was a real yeah. mother-in-law pleaser, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <He> <laughs> that said, must have earned him a lot of points. <laughs> he said that after he met my mother, that he had to throw away all his mother-in-law jokes. <laughs> Ronald Reagan has been called the great communicator. He kept a journal, jotting down even the simplest thoughts on a daily basis. Entries like this one written in the White House in 1981. Wednesday, March the 4th, our wedding anniversary. 29 years of more happiness than any man could rightly deserve. To have someone write that after 29 years of marriage is pretty I know. darn impressive, huh? I know, I know. Wasn't I lucky, Kate? You were. I know. <laughs> You've said in the past, mainly you have to be willing to want to give. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, I think in a marriage, sometimes, sometimes you give, it's never 50-50. You know, sometimes you give 90, and the other one gives 10, or vice versa. It, it changes, and you have to be willing to do that. It was never a problem with me <laughs> or with him. What was it that attracted you to him? Oh, he was unlike any actor I had ever met. <laughs> never talked about himself or his next picture or his last picture, ever. What did he talk about? He talked about the Civil War. He talked about horses. Uh, but he never talked about himself. Ever, ever. That must have been terribly refreshing. Oh, yeah, you bet. <laughs> Nancy Davis and Ronald Reagan were married at the Little Brown Church in Studio City, California, on March 4, 1952. The early days were a challenge. They had to quickly learn to function as a blended family. President Reagan already had two children from his previous marriage to actress Jane Wyman. I think for any woman, it's hard 
to step into that position because you want the children to like you and they want to like you and there's but you they know, may not like they, you. But they may not. <laughs> and vice versa. Vice versa. But we, I mean, we had chances to get to know each other. And so it worked out fine. As with any relationship, it took work. And the Reagans had their fair share of struggles. We certainly did have obstacles. You know, there was a period when Ronnie had left the studio and it was a very dry period, and financially, we were not in good shape. Through the years, they weathered the storm, and the enduring image of the Reagans is of one of the most devoted political couples in history. But their later years have been marked by sadness. First, President Reagan's diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, and then the death of his daughter, Maureen, who lost her battle with melanoma this past summer. It's so unnatural. A child isn't supposed to go before the parent. It's just, it's not supposed to be that way. And I remember flying to Sacramento for the funeral and thinking to myself, I can't believe I'm making this trip. I, I really can't. But she was one courageous, gutsy she woman, certainly wasn't was. she? She certainly was. Yes, she was. And she had a wonderful husband who never left her side. As painful as Maureen's death was and, and her illness prior to it, in some ways, I understand it, it brought your family closer together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. It did. You get down to what's really important in life. Much has been written about the tempestuous relationship between the Reagans and their children. Recently, Patty Davis has reconciled with her mother, and now she has become a regular presence in her parents' lives. Obviously, it's made me very happy, and I think it's made her happy, too. I know it's made her happy, too. Um, because she's experiencing a chapter in his, in his life now that's very meaningful, certainly very different, but she's part of it. So Nancy Reagan will share the memories of 50 years of marriage with her daughter at her side. Will you be able to celebrate in some small way, you think? I know it's hard. No, inside, yes, but there's no way to celebrate. But I can celebrate the fact that we've had 50 years, which still, I can't believe it.